for tapes, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Saturday afternoon, November the 30th, 1991. This is tape one of two tapes of the afternoon service of the Thanksgiving weekend teaching and deliverance camp meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Let the weak say they are strong. I am strong because of Jesus. Turn to 1 Corinthians 10. 1 Corinthians 10. Everybody have it? 1 Corinthians 10. For I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, or ignorant of your Bible. I'm reading our New American Standard. That our fathers, I want you to say our fathers. Our fathers. Our fathers. Our fathers. I want you to concentrate on that a few minutes. Our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Who, who were, who passed through the sea? Who else? I mean, I want the real. Israel. So it says all that our fathers, our fathers. This is New Testament now. I'm not reading out of the Old Testament. And all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And all ate the same spiritual food. Have we been eating spiritual food this week? And all drank the same spiritual drink, for they were drinking from a spiritual rock which followed them, and that rock was Christ. I want you to all say, Christ Jesus liveth in me. Christ Jesus liveth in me. Say it again. Christ Jesus liveth in me. And our fathers were the Israelites. I hope all of you can receive this. Don't get mad, because I'm going to go further. Nevertheless, with most of them, God was not well pleased. Did the children of Israel please the Lord every day? For they were laid low in the wilderness. Have you been laid low in the wilderness lately? We're still in the wilderness, aren't we? But we're coming out on the arms of our beloved. Now, these things happened as examples for us. I think we took up a lot of their traits, don't you? The children of Israel were constantly causing trouble. I feel sorry for Moses. And, and I really, I don't know if I were God, if I'd, if I'd have kept him out of the promised land. But he did one little thing wrong, didn't he? How many believe we all do little things wrong? How many believe we're coming out of doing little things wrong? And big things wrong. We're coming into a walk that the Lord has required. And that's why we have deliverance. Now, in the early days of Pentecost, where I grew up, in the, in the early 30s, we had salvation. We had baptism of the Holy Spirit. We had healing. We had miracles. Well, we've had miracles here today. How many feel you've had a miracle here today? When, when the Lord changes us, that's a miracle. We don't have to put ourselves down that they were the only ones that had miracles because there's miracles here every day. But we have been laid low in the wilderness. We have suffered terrible at the hands of the enemy. Now, I don't know exactly, uh, somebody said last night that Maxwell White was one of the uh, first deliverance ministries. And that was probably in the 30s, maybe, or early 40s. And then, you see, the Lord brings waves of glory. First the salvation wave. And then the Holy Spirit, baptism of the Holy Spirit, and then the great healing revivals, we were in all of those. And I wonder how I walked so densely living in a in the parsonage. I really do wonder. But you see, it wasn't the time for the Lord to bring forth this final army. How many know you're in the army? Amen. Now, if you haven't showed up for the battle, you you better show up because we're coming into a day and an age right now in this decade that we're going to have to fight every inch of the way. You know, when, you, when you're in the 30-fold ministry, that's when you get saved, free, everything's lovely. Oh, you're testifying. You got saved. The Lord's changing you. And then you go into the 60-fold and you, you receive the gifts of the Spirit. We have all these wonderful charismatic meetings. And then the Lord said, that's free. 
Free gift, isn't it? Then he said, come on up higher. Does he keep saying, come on higher? In the Spirit. We, we must tune in to what the Holy Spirit is saying in these last days. We must tune in to what the Spirit is saying to the church. John told us that in the book of Revelation. But from now on, it's going to cost you everything. If you ever want to become a hundredfold Christian. How many would like to have the hundredfold anointing? Now, we sat under Dr. Price's ministry, and he used to say that laymen in the last days would walk into a hospital, and they would be unknown. They would just be a person walking with the Lord. There's a lot of unknowns that have no big names, but the Lord is using them, and he's preparing them. And he used to tell us that they'll walk into hospitals and clear the whole place out, and not a soul will know who did it or what their names were. And we always want to say, oh, who prayed for you? Who prayed for you? Oh, oh, I got prayed by. And that's all right. We should reverence. Don't you think that's all right? I think it's all right, too, but we don't need to worship them. We don't need to worship them. Nobody. Now, all of these things, verse 6, happened as examples for us that we should not crave evil things as they also crave. The fear of God is to hate evil. Do you really hate evil? If you hate the devil enough, you're going to want to fight him with every weapon that you've got. What are the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're it's up there. But my issue is God to the pulling down of strongholds. You know, it doesn't do anything when I first come to deliver. It's a horrible thing to think you've got something inside of you that, that controls you. Oh, I, I just, that just blew my mind. And I could, I could say, like, we hate to say what we had, but I don't mind to tell you I've had everything, I think. And, but I started out, and I, I, I knew the first time I ever heard Brother Prince preach, I knew that I had demons. I'd tell Granny, there's nothing wrong with you. You just imagine it. Tell my daddy, been a preacher, was a preacher years, years and years. He'd say, honey, there's nothing wrong with you. I'd say, but I feel something wrong in me something wrong in me. And everybody would try to talk me out of it. Does people try to talk you out of it? Your pastor will try to talk you out of it. You'll go in and they say, I need prayer. There's something wrong with me. Oh, honey, just praise the Lord. Just, oh, Jesus, help her. Give her a little blessing today. We need more than a touch. We're right at the end of the age. We don't even, we've never walked this way before. We don't know what we're coming into. Do we? Nope. Where's that Tommy Cook? How come he's not saying Amen. Oh, thank you. And read that next verse, seventh verse. And do not be idolaters. That's only in the Catholic Church. As some of them were. Now, these children of Israel, that we've got their blood in us, because it says our fathers, I mean, I mean, let's face the facts. Isn't that logic? It's just plain truth. You may think all of Israel is over there. <laughs> They're all right here. They're the church of the living God. And do not be idolaters. Now, I'm going to speak on idols. And you may think I belong in the, talking down to the uh, Catholic church, but listen, Pentecostals have idols. If you don't think so, just touch one of their favorite preachers. I won't listen to anybody else's takes but Glenn and Irma's. Oh, I pray for you. I pray for you. I won't listen to anybody else's tapes but Kenneth Copeland. I've heard that. We've been in the tape ministry for how long, Glenn? Since 1964. Before we hardly knew what a tape recorder was. We were thrust into it by the Lord. You know, the calling of the Lord is really something. You can call yourself. Your mother can call you. Your father can call you. They used to try to call us to Africa. And I, I may have not been very rebellious to my parents, but I was, I was saying, no, I'm not going to Africa. I'm not going. That was the whole thing in, in, the, in the early 40s. Every couple that got married is supposed to go to Africa. But well, we'd have been shipwrecked long ago. It was bad enough to come to Arkansas from California. <laughs> you think I didn't suffer? No mall when we came, no McDonald's when we came, no 31 flavors when we came. Gave all of our money away, so I didn't need the mall, because if you don't have money, you can't go to the mall. Let's get back on this idolatry. So I tell them that we all have idolatry in us. You'll soothe it over tonight? Good. 
as it is written, the people sat down to eat and to drink. Don't you love to just go out and eat and drink and have fellowship? I don't mean liquor. I'm against that. I've been against that ever since we got saved. I was against movies. I'm still against movies. I think it's a waste of time. I think it, it robs you of your spiritual walk. If you knew that Jesus was coming tomorrow morning, you think you'd sit and watch a movie all night? I doubt it. But we had that man right here in Arkansas that said the rapture was going to come, you remember? My land, people were just petrified. I, I, they called me up from California Airplace. What do you think about that? And I said, I think he's not coming because Jesus doesn't even know when he's coming. And that man sure doesn't know. Jesus won't come till the Father. He says, I only obey the Father. I would to God that we could all say that. We only obey the, the Holy Spirit, the Father. Praise the Lord. And sit up to play. You think they don't? We don't have a lot of playful Christians. Well, I wish you'd say something. <laughs> Nor let us act immorally. Oh, my. Oh, my. We surely don't have that in Pentecostal circles, do we? Well, the world knows we've got it in Pentecostal circles because it's spread across the TV. And I tell you, it, it, it makes me want to weep inside and cry for those fallen men. But for the grace of God, it could be any of us. And I've seen the biggest top notch ministers in my years, just the devil just whip them down. Idols. 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 And they, they became immoral. Well, there's a lot of immorality in the body of Christ now. Lust. As some of them did, and 23,000 fell in one day. Now, that's an example for us. Why do you think people die early death? Because of sin. The wages of sin is death. Stop sinning and you'll stop dying. Can you see that? Yeah, that's true. Now, none of us are without sin, but we should be. And we have the precious blood. We, have, we know how to repent, don't we? You know, I have learned... That repentance is the, is, if we had more repentance at the altar, when we, when people would get saved instead of having a decision, we would have so many evil spirits. I mean, we've got to face it. Evil spirits are just playing havoc, especially with spirit-filled people. Now, he doesn't have to go out and bother the world too much. He's got them. But if he can just get one family with a, uh, just a, Put in the, in the door, he'll tear up a family. Is that true? Immorality, lust, pornography, all of that. If you have any of that around, or if you've ever looked at it, you're going to need deliverance. Because that old lust of the eye is going to get you. It will. The, the devil is going to touch anything in us that we haven't repented of, isn't he? He's going to to just maul us around and he, he wants he doesn't hate us so bad he hates the Jesus in us he hates Jesus he hates the unknown tongue when we pray in the unknown tongue he doesn't know what we're praying about and that upsets him and I think that that if every day if we'd all pray what they called pray through in the olden days we'd be we'd be more victorious because when we're praying in an unknown tongue the Holy Spirit prays absolutely perfect and he knows what we have need of. And Jesus said, I know what you have need of before you even ask. But he wants us to ask because he wants us. He, it's good for us to ask out loud because our ears need to hear that we're repenting. And the devil needs to hear. He hates the blood of Jesus. But we love Jesus, don't we? And we love that blood. 23,000 fell in one day. Well, there were how many million of the children of Israel? I forget, but they, they had a lot of them. But, nor let us try the Lord, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the serpent. The enemy is a destroyer, and Jesus came to destroy the what? Works of the devil. And he is, he's living in us, isn't he? And we're his spokesperson on the earth now by the Spirit. Well, He lives in us. The Holy Spirit lives in us. The Father lives in us. But it, it's how we yield to the Lord 
that counts. I don't want to be destroyed by serpents. I don't want to die an early death. Now, Glenn hit his 70 mark last year, and I will hit mine this coming year. I always thought 70 was awfully old. I don't think it is now at all. He says, I'm going to return your youth. I thank him every day. I want my youth back. I want to be strong. I don't want to be crippled. I don't want to be anything wrong with my body. Well, I still have some problems. But I praise God for his strength. And you know, I told you the other day, let the weak say they are strong. I am strong through Jesus Christ. It's him that gives me the strength. It's him that that does the work in us. Oh my, we're coming to a terrible thing. And grumble, as some of them did. And we're destroyed by the destroyer. Who's the destroyer? The devil is the destroyer. He wants to kill us. He wants to destroy us. He wants to steal, rob us of everything we have. He'll rob you of your salvation. He'll rob you from the Word of God. We had a big session today about the spirit of forgetfulness, not being able to remember the Word of God. And I told him in my experience. I haven't had, I've had a lot of different experiences, but that one was one that stayed in my mind because that demon was the biggest shock. I knew I had a lot of other things, but I would have said, well, I don't have that. But when the man of God said, you have a spirit of forgetfulness, I thought, how? How ridiculous. Well, I always let them pray. You know, if it ain't in there, it ain't going to come out. You got it. <laughs> well, about three times he said, your spirit of forgetfulness, come out of her. And all of a sudden, the voice came right on me and said, no. I was like I was sitting over in that chair watching me here. I thought, oh, my. Now, Glenn used to always, I tell him, he's worn out my brain, ask me, who are those? Where, where do they live? and all of that but you know you know what it was Derek Prince was fighting at his wife I mean that thing put up a terrible fight I've never had such a hard deliverance I mean where a demon threw me around on the floor and we were in our own house oh thank the lord I wasn't in front of the congregation of the righteous <laughs> now I'll tell what I'm glad because I used to tell, tell him I'm full of demons she said there's nothing wrong with you you're just imagining all that I said no I'm not and I would get so angry with him because I knew he had demons. And then I'd get more. Every time you get angry with somebody, you're going to get more. I mean, that's just the way he works. And I would say, boy, I, I must have cursed him. I don't know. I made a proclamation. If you don't submit to deliverance, you're going to fall down in the congregation of the righteous and everybody is going to see you. Do you think he did? Oh, yeah, one day. Riding around on the floor saying, don't stop praying, it's killing me. <laughs> oh, he can tell you. It, I enjoyed it for about... <laughs> I enjoyed it for 30 minutes or so. And then I, it got up here and he had that death rattle. Have you ever heard anybody dying? Oh, it's scary. Then I thought he was going to die. And, and the two pastors... Well, started <laughs> no, I, I got on my knees and I started to pray for him. And, and the, the two men... One of them was the same man she came under way back years, the same time we did, but she couldn't handle it. She's got a song, and she'll have to sing it for you. Would you like to hear her sing a song? <clears throat> I mean, in early days, it was terrible. They always had a bucket right up here. And she wrote a song. And I didn't know that she'd ever been under this one man's ministry until she started to sing. And I said, you've been under Brother So-and-So's ministry. And she said, do you know him? I said, I sure do. But I was so proud. I couldn't, I couldn't do that. I just wouldn't do that. But I, that, that spirit of forgetfulness, here's what it said. Derek Prince said, tell me, how are you operating to her? It said, we won't. We won't. We're locked to her brain, and we're not coming out. He said, but what do you do to her? We won't let her remember the word of God. Now, if you can't remember the word of God, you can't get the first base casting out a demon because it is written. That's how Jesus answered the devil every time it is written. We need to confess, Jesus gives me power. Say that. Jesus gives me power. Over all the powers of the devil. Over all the powers of the devil. You believe that? Yes. You have Jesus in you? Yes. You believe you've got power over the devil? Yes. Well, you have to tell him so. Oh, he hates that. You can say it is written. The Lord rebukes you. Try that. 
Why? You, you don't know what might happen. <laughs> All right. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands, stand, take heed lest he fall. We can never give so sure. We can never be so sure and so religious and so holy that you think the enemy. All you have to do is watch TV. The famous ministries. I just cry inside for them. I just cry inside for them. If they only knew what we were teaching here today, and if they only would submit themselves, it's this awful pride and this arrogance. Even Derek Prince right now has been through something, and the Lord told him the reason you're sick, the reason you're sick is because you need to humble yourself, and I'm not going to do it for you, the Lord said. It's right out on a tape and in, in, a, in his magazine. And he also told him that you're arrogant. Well, I could vouch for that. He used to have me crying all the time. <laughs> and I do hate crying women. I always say that. <laughs> but I'm telling you, we're coming into a day that we must seek the Lord, that every little smidgen of everything that is evil comes out of us. So we'll have some power and authority over these evil powers. They're going to get stronger. The higher up you go in the spirit, they're going to try to pick you off, and they'll wait until they can embarrass Jesus with, with prominent people. So beware, beware of becoming proud and arrogant and not humbling yourself. The best way to humble yourself is to fast. Oh, your body hates that? It hates it. Every Thursday we fast. Maybe we're in a ritual, but I don't know. That's what Glenn has established. We fast, and we used to fast all day, but when the boys are out here, the young men mowing lawns and everything, I just couldn't not deprive them of eating in the evening, and, and but, but you grown people, you can handle that now. You say, well, I get a headache. Well, that's because you're addicted. Is that right? Yeah. We idolize food, don't we? Idols, don't we? Come on, do we? We uh, idolize preachers. We've got to. We're acting just exactly like Israel acted. And I'm telling you, when I felt so sorry for Moses every time I read about him because he went through so much with those grumbling, rebellious creatures. It's it's terrible. The church in the wilderness, we're still there. Still our father's blood in our bloodline. And that's why the Lord wants, in the last verse of Joel, very last chapter, last verse of Joel, he says, I will cleanse your blood that has not been cleansed. You can go to any doctor anywhere, and they'll ask you for your history. Did your mother have heart trouble? Did your father die of heart trouble? They, don't they? They have all that rigmarole. Those are all inherited curses. Now, you may not think that curses are anything only in Africa. Look, they're right here in America, and they're right in us and on us. The day I was born, I, my, my grandmother was mad because my mother had a second child. She stomped her feet. Now, my mother told me this all my life, but I didn't really understand it. She stomped her feet. She said, I wish this kid would die. And I'm telling you, I went to death's door so many times. And even my doctor said, Irma, you should have died on the street. We had a a horrible car accident, my spleen was ruptured, my brain was thrown to the side, all kinds of hideous things that the devil was always trying to kill me. And I didn't know I had a curse of death on me. How many here know whether or not you have a curse of death on you? That you're constantly sick, you've inherited, maybe you've in inherited mental problems, maybe you've inherited diabetes, maybe you've inherited heart trouble. All of these things are, are a good sign that you have a curse on you. And I never knew till a man of God says, Irma, you have a curse of death on you. I started thinking about that. Well, when I had three-day measles, I'd go to death's door. When I had a whooping cough, I'd go to death's door. They'd despair of my life. That devil was trying to kill me. I don't know if he knows what we're going to be or do, but he wanted to kill me. And I'm praising the Lord that I don't want any more death. I don't want to go to death's door anymore. And I don't want the Lord to have to punish me. You say, he don't punish people. Oh, yes, he does. 
I told them upstairs yesterday how I fell down those stairs in the other room. I did up the spiral stairway. I didn't fall head first. I fell through the back part of the stair that has no board on it. I fell clear down to my groin, but I was holding on. Otherwise, the devil would have really killed me because I would have turned the somerset and tore my leg off, I'm sure. And I limped around. I couldn't get up here hardly on that platform. I, I think that's why Glenn has it down here. I'd be limping. For over a year, my leg would kill me down the side of my leg. And I don't know how long it was. It was too long. I had no idea. Every preacher that come here, they prayed for me. Well, i got to pray for your leg. They'd pray. Nothing would happen. You know why? One man of God out in Phoenix took one look at me when I walked in. When I walked in there, he said, he always calls me girl. Girl, what, is, what do you need today? He hadn't seen us for a long time. I said, oh, my leg, my leg. He looked at it and he said, oh, yes, I see what's wrong with that. I said, well, I fell down. He said, no, it's worse than that. You're going to have to repent now. So he tells you, he, he's ministered to us a lot over the years and taught us a lot. He's an old timer, 89 years old now. Fast and pray constantly. He said, there's a serpent wrapped tight around your leg. You're getting no circulation. And it's because, he said, do you want to know? I said, yes, I want to know. He said, you're going to have to repent. I said, all right. I'm willing, because when you suffer long enough, you've had enough. You're ready for anything. Anything. People that come in here that really want deliverance and they've suffered so long, they're ready no matter what it is. He said, well, that's a serpent of unforgiveness. You haven't forgiven somebody. I said, well, I thought I had. He said, somebody's hurt you really bad and you haven't, you haven't forgiven them. You know, a lot of ministries get hurt. They get hurt. And, and, but we have to. See, you can say, I forgive, I forgive, I forgive. But I tell you, you have to do it with your head, your heart, your whole being. And he says, you're going to have to repent now. Well, he says, I'll lead you in a prayer. When he leads you in a repentance prayer, you know you've been, been led. So he went on and on, any time, in any form or any way that she's ever yielded to this spirit of unforgiveness. Lord, please, please forgive her. Please forgive her. She wants to forgive, but these people hurt her bad, and she just gets that memory recall, and she thinks about her when she sees them. And, and it went on. Oh, when he makes you repent, I mean, the blood of Jesus washes your leg. Is that all right? You believe in that kind of repentance? And then finally he said now that sin is all gone. That didn't mean the demon was gone. He said, now that serpent's wrapped tight around your leg and you have no circulation in your left leg. And that was true. I used to go home and have to rub my leg and have a terrible time. And uh, I always kept working. I think I work whether I'm sick or not. I always say, Glenn will get me out of the coffin. Can't you do one more thing? All he did now, he's no, he's no loud in the name of Jesus and screaming person. He just took one look at it, pointed his finger at it. He says, you're going to have to go. You have no authority there anymore. He has been forgiven by Jesus, and you have no right there. Now you go in Jesus' name. And it went. And I could walk as good as I'm walking today. Now, does that say anything to you? Why do you think Christians are sick? I'll guarantee you if we have a healing line and a healing minister here, that almost everybody in here would get up. I saw Jack Hayford at a full gospel convention. There must have been several thousand in that big auditorium. And he said, I want anybody that has an infirmity to stand and come around in front of me. And when the person got there, he said, just go on back around to your seat. And this went on and on. I said, oh, Lord, is it really that bad in the body of Christ? We teach healing. And it is. Could it be from unforgiveness? Could it be from idolatry? Could it be from sin? Of course it is. I'm not saying that every single thing, but uh, I'm not too sure but what everything that the enemy has put on us is from sin. I know that. The children of Israel wanted God, didn't they? They really wanted to worship him, but they liked to just stay in their tent right there at the door. They didn't want to get too close. Now, I know a lot of people have told me, well, I'm afraid of you, Irma. Well, listen, I'm only a vessel of the Lord, and I don't know anything unless the Holy Spirit shows me. They went whoring after other gods. They just said, God, you, or 
Moses, you up there and talk to God and come back and tell us. So that's what we do. We're telling, we're telling the people in the wilderness. And we're overcoming by the what? The blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We have a lot of golden calves in the church's corral. you believe that? Lots of idols and lots of pitfalls. We all, what is an idol? Well, if you don't know, why don't you get a mirror and look in the mirror and see what you see? Do you hear that? Is it sinking in? If you want to see what an idol looks like, find yourself a mirror. You think we don't love self? The Bible says, what? Love your neighbor as yourself? Do we? No. Is that sin? Of course it is. We need to love everybody. Well, I love, I, I hate all these, has that gushy love that don't amount to a hill of beans. I meet people uptown and they'll say, oh, I love, oh, I've just been wanting to come to you. Man. Oh, oh, I just hear they're so wonderful. Do you think they ever come? <laughs> Kevin used to call it saccharine love. They just carry on, you know, carry on. Ishy, sweet, mushy, saccharine love. Doesn't amount to a hill of beans. I want to go beyond the tent door, don't you? I want to be free. I don't want to love myself, but we do. You know, we take care of ourselves before we take care of our neighbors, and much less love them. Sometimes we don't even know them. How many really know your neighbors and you really love them? I don't know. Few. Few. Hilda loves me. I'm her neighbor. She's got other neighbors she loves. Okay, I'm going to get with my notes. He's writing down things. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> now I'm going to go into some other idol. Money. I get calls at least once a week from people. Where do we put our money? Well, I don't know what bank's going to go close. I don't know what saving and loan's going to go close. I know they used to tell us. <laughs> I'm not taking up an offering now. I'm just saying how much we love money and that, that old root that is a root of all evil. I always say if the rapture came today by tomorrow, this root would cause people to dig up the golden streets in heaven, in heaven. Oh, my coveting, boastful, greedy. These are all idols. Immorality, we heard that, immorality. Uh, craving evil things. Headstrong, immoral, stubborn, self-willed. Oh, my, self-willed. Self-willed. Not willing to help anybody. I remember Glenda had about six places to set up at the convention, and, and there was a really nice man. I thought he was a nice man. And I said, would you mind carrying one of these microphone stands for me? I have to take this recorder and go set it up over there in that other workshop. He said, well, I wouldn't be caught dead walking through this hotel lobby carrying that thing. I said, oh, okay. So I carried it. It wasn't very long after that. That man had a heart attack. When you go lay on your bed and you think you're dying, I guess people have told me that they have a million things to run into their mind in just a minute or two. Well, shall we bind the strong man of dirty blood? We've got... We've got all the stuff in our bloodline. Who knows what all we got? The Bible says our hearts are desperately wicked. Who can know them? Can you know your heart? No. Well, of course not. We have to just ask the Holy Spirit to turn the light on us and to cause us to, to see our own faults. You don't need to be looking at everybody else's faults. Now, see, I used to look at Glenn's and look what I got into, all, all his spirit. But the Lord took care of him. I don't know if I prophesied that or cursed him. <laughs> But anyway, he's doing better. <laughs> oh, you, I've lived with him 50 years. You should have lived with him the first 25 years we were around. Oh, my. Sit down at the table. Well, what do we got to eat? Well, I said, we've got uh, fish and rice and salad and or coleslaw and dessert. I want gravy. I can't eat without gravy. I said, well, I can't make gravy with fish. Well, you sure can. So he'd get up. What do you think he did? Throw so some... Grease in the skillet, lard, when we've eaten that abominable stuff, threw flour in on it, stirred it up, poured milk in it, and there I am, sitting, the bride, sitting there, 
thinking, this is a lovely dinner. Why do you have to have gravy three meals a day? Because his mother had gravy three meals a day. <laughs> that could cause more fights in our marriage than anything we've ever had. He now doesn't even hardly eat gravy. He's finally seen the light. <laughs> I pray. We have to pray one for another. And I tell you, it's hard to be married. It is. It's hard to live with a man. It's hard for men to live with women, but we got to do it. We vowed we'd do it. I hate divorce. You hate divorce? Oh, he does. But, you know, he wrote the children of Israel a, a divorce because they just upset him terrible. He'd talk about his abo- their abominations. You know what abomination means? It makes God want to throw up at our sins and abominations and our iniquities. We know... We know right from wrong now. I dare say everybody in here knows right from wrong. But when we know to do right and we just go ahead and do the other, we are covered with iniquity. That is iniquity. Knowing to do right. Now, somebody will say lawless. I've heard that. Lawless, lawless, lawless. Well, of course it's lawless. But the simpler thing is when you know. You know you're supposed to read your Bible every day. You're supposed to pray in, in tongues every day. You're supposed to, to obey your parents. Obey your husband. I do. I used to have, I got delivered from a fear of my husband. One time I was down at a camp in Georgia, and Frank Missoula was walking back and forth in front of me. He says, you're afraid of your husband. I said, I think he's afraid of me. He said, you are afraid of your husband. Boy, when they put the B on you, you know. I said, all right. And he prayed for me. Because I, I would sit down to the table and just hoped that I had the right food that he wanted to eat. That's why I say it's hard to be married, but we're getting the victory. Another 50 years and we'll have it made. (laughs) All right, we've touched on bad blood, unclean blood, unclean blood. If your great-grandfather committed adultery or fornication, it's in your bloodline. If your mother had diabetes, it's in your bloodline. You are susceptible to those things. Now, some people can glide through life and hardly anything bothers them. Well, that must be glorious. But some people have had terrible parents and grandparents. Now, my great-grandmother, I didn't know it, but she read Palms and Tea Leaves when she came from Germany. And that has affected this campground because it was in our blood. Third and the fourth generation, 160 years back, you are affected. You are affected if you've ever been to a fortune teller, or your mother has, or your grandmother, or great-grandmother. If you've ever belonged to these cults. And one of the worst things is the Masonic Lodge, and the uh, the Demolays, and the Eastern Stars. You know, those are wicked spirits. I learned it the hard way. The very difficult, hard way. One time a man called up on Saturday morning, and... Uh, He said, I'd like to come and be delivered from the Masonic spirit. I said, oh, okay. I thought, that's an easy one. I thought, that's going to be easy. Well, he came. He started to pray. And all of a sudden, my throat was throttled. I thought, what in the world? I said, Grant, you better stop and pray for me. Something's on me. My grandfather had been a Mason. My grandmother had been an Eastern star. I had never, never, I used to want to go. If you're curious about something, that's when the evil spirit can come in, too. I'd go to, they owned the grocery store, and the lodge hall was upstairs. I'd say, they'd say, we're going to lodge. Now, you stay down here with a hard hand here in this grocery store, a little, little country store. I'd say, but I want to go. They, you don't know the password. When they'd go and go up those stairs, I'd go out there, and I'd creep up the stairs trying to hear the password, and then I thought I could go in. You don't have to do very much. Look at a Ouija board. Be a little interested in a Ouija board. Be a little interested in, in a horoscope. Have your handwriting analysis done. Read a Jehovah Witness book. God says, I'll curse you. Amen. He will curse you. Amen. It may not crop out in this generation, but it may crop out. And I'm telling you, we're all under many curses. And I don't want to scare you, but I mean, we've got to face the facts. We're not playing church here anymore. Gary Prince wrote me a letter. I wrote and told him about our daughter, and he knew her. He said, if I get well from what's wrong with me now, I'm going to write a book on deliverance and tell it like it is. You know, we all know a lot more than we're saying. We do, because I know it frightens people. But I'm telling you, we've got to come straight. 
grace from the Holy Ghost. Let's pray. Let's repent. We're going to first bind the strong man. You know, you can you can cast out all these little things, but the strong man's still there, and they'll, all those little things will come back with seven times worse. So we're going to bind the strong man. Is that all right? Yeah. You ready to repent about idolatry? Yeah. All right, let's pray. Dear Father, Dear Father we, come in the name of Jesus. we come in the name of Jesus. We're needing help, Lord. We're, help, Lord. we're sorry for our sins. Lord, we need you. We need your deliverance. We need that precious blood. We are sorry for all this idolatry that we've indulged in. We are sorry for all the things we've inherited. And all of our ignorance all these years. But Lord, we want help. We need deliverance. We want to repent. We need your precious blood for every time we've ever sinned with lust, covetousness, idolatry, or anything else connected with that. And every time we've asked Santa Claus to bring us something and listen to lies of our parents, telling us we'll get sticks in our stockings, because Santa Claus is watching. And then we told our children. And Santa Claus is not omnipresent. He's not a God. And we will not tolerate that idol in our houses, in our family line. And I dare say that every one of us has indulged about Santa Claus. I'm going to stop a minute because about three or four weeks ago, the Lord just showed me. Now, I threw away the Christmas tree and all the ornaments. and all, I had about 15 Santa Clauses. Where I used to work, the girls that worked for me would make Santa Clauses, big, tall ones, all kinds of things. I was collecting them. What a thing to have in your house. Bring no abominable thing in your house. That's as abominable as, as you want to get. Now, you may, I may be touching your very tender spot. I hope I am because... I brought it up at the prayer group a few of us the other night, and, you know, we had a Santa Claus suit. Glenn used to dress up in it, carry a basket of toys, go up and down the street, ringing his bell, and, well, did you ever do something like that? Giving, giving out these little things and saying, Santa Claus is coming. Well, I tell you, that's as wicked as it comes. That's an idol. Between that and Mickey Mouse, I don't know which is the worst, but Santa Claus is not omnipresent. He doesn't see when you're good or bad, but the all-seeing eye of God sees it, and you better believe it. That's an, that's an evil idol. I mean, we all got delivered, but you know who got the worst deliverance, the hardest? Coughing, carrying on, didn't he? That is the man right there. <laughs> he isn't even listening. <laughs> okay. You believe you've repented? Now, you can get on your knees and repent. There's a lot of things to repent of next week. But we're going to call these spirits out. Both feet on the floor. This is a delivery room right now. You don't, you don't uh, deliver a baby without them bearing down. And you don't get delivered. It's only an act of God. But he says, believers will cast out evil spirits. Are you all believers? You know what the word cast out means in the dictionary? To breathe out, give a quick jerk, and vomit. Somebody, somebody uh, said today, they were telling me about their preacher. She told their, her preacher about being down here. He says, do they pass out buckets? No, she said, paper towels. The minister, the minister that brought us into it, he belonged to the Open Bible Standard Church. He... He went to a meeting in Canada when the Great Revival was going on in Canada. He got laid on the floor between the benches, got delivered, came home and introduced his church. And, and there was tremendous revival. And the brass from headquarters come with the briefcase and said to the girl in the, uh, in the vestibule, Tell me, is it true they use A&W cups to throw up demons? She said, Yes, what do you use? <laughs> That preacher wasn't long for that church. <laughs> All right.
Let's get serious now. This is serious business, but you've got to have a little uh, joy or you couldn't handle this. It's hard on the flesh. Oh, I hated it. I hated it. Still hard on my flesh. All right. Everybody ready? You know how to breathe out? Take a gut level breath. No little. If you're having a baby and it's not doing too good, the nurses came in. I had two children. They come in and they wham me on the leg. Bear down. I said, I don't want to. It hurts. Bear down, I said. Breathe in, you do it. All you have to do is cast it up. Breathe it out. The Jesus is down in there. He's going to push it out. But you have to help. And you can finally be delivered. You can be delivered in the night. You can be delivered as you go home. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bind the strong man of idolatry over every one of these people and over this uh, campground. You spirit, you strong man of idolatry, I command you to come off of your throne now and you will not interfere with this. I bind the strong man of idolatry, idolizing your children, idolizing your home, idolizing your cars, idolizing your pleasures, idolizing food, idolizing sex, idolizing pornography, idolizing food, drink, addictions, idolizing all these things that are are fresh life. We command you in the name of Jesus, come out, idolatry. Come on out in Jesus' name. I bind your power. I bind your power. The anointing is going to destroy the yokes in you. In the name of Jesus, I command you to come on out. Well, come on. Get with it. Come on out in Jesus' name. Come on out, idolatry. You don't have to have any dignity in here. We'll have that tomorrow. Come on out, idolatry. In the name of Jesus, come out of her. She needs some help right over here. In the name of Jesus, come out of her. Come on out in Jesus' name. Occult spirits, come out of her now in Jesus' name. False religions, come out in Jesus' name. I bind your power. Idolizing, idolizing your children. Idolizing your children. Idolizing your husband or your wife. We do not bow down to idols. If you've been a Catholic, we break the powers of Mary. We break the powers of the Pope. We break the powers of of praying to dead saints. They can't help you. They're dead. They're dead. Command you in the name of Jesus. False gods, false gods, false gods in the name of Jesus. We break your power. We break your power in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. All false gods. They're coming out. They don't have to make a big fuss. In the name of Jesus. Come on out. That's right. Yawn. Breathe out. Gut level breath. Cough them out. However they want to come out. Scream them out. Scream them out. In the name of Jesus, you have to come out. We don't want you here anymore, you idolatrous spirits. In the name of Jesus, come out. All the idolatry, all the divination, all the witchcraft, rebellion, come out now of her in Jesus' name. All the reading of unity books and Jehovah Witness books, all these things we've contaminated our mind with, novels, novels. In the name of Jesus, come on out. Everybody pray. She'll take care of her own demons. You take care of yours. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Unforgiveness, come out. You spirits that make people sick, unforgiveness, come on out. Come out of her in Jesus' name. Come on out in Jesus' name. Let it go. Let it go. It's wanting to move. It's, it's coming right up there. In the name of Jesus, come on out of her. Come on out of here. Let it go. Let it go. In Jesus' name. Cough it out now. Let's go. It's ready to go. It's ready to go. In Jesus' name. Come on out of here. Let go of her in Jesus' name. Let go of her in Jesus' name. You are defeated. It is written, Satan. Jesus defeated you at, at the cross. He defeated you in the garden. He defeated you in the grave. You are no longer our master. We will not. Uh, Jesus Christ is our master. It is written. The Lord rebukes you. The Lord rebukes you. Go right ahead. Pray for her. In the name of Jesus. 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 Let that go in Jesus' name. Breathe it out. Gut level breath. <sighs> That's right. Let it go in Jesus' name. All idolatry. All idolatry. In Jesus' name. Idolizing. Idolizing things. Idolizing things. Are you the one with jealousy? Okay. Spirit of jealousy, I bind you. I command you to go now in Jesus' name. Come out of her. Jealous in Jesus' name. Come on out. Jealous, I bind you. Take a deep, gut level breath. we will cough it out. Let it go in Jesus' name. It's moving up. It's moving up. Everybody just keep in prayer. 
cross it out. Now let it go. There it comes. It's coming up now in Jesus' name. That's right. Let it go. Cough it out. Don't. That's right. I need a cough. I need a paper towel. All right. Come on out. Come on out. You can't hold her captive. I come against all strife in this marriage in the name of Jesus. All strife in this marriage. All unforgiveness. All unforgiveness in this marriage. I command that to go. All unforgiveness. That's right. Cough it out. Let it go. You, you've got a wonderful heritage. Just by learning this when you're first married, when you're young. In the name of Jesus. All strife. All strife. All strife in this home. I bind that power over them in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Through the blood of Jesus, we are cleansed. The enemy cannot live where the blood of Jesus is living. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm going to let Glenn come on up because I don't know what he's going to talk about. But there's a lot of things in here. Have you learned anything today? Anybody want prayer right this minute? In the name of Jesus. 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 Come out of her. Come out of her. You're spirit of cult. Come out of her in Jesus' name. You divine in spirit. Come out of him in Jesus' name. Sickness, sickness and unforgiveness come out of him now in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out out of her. The spirit of divination come out of her now in Jesus' name. Take a deep, deep gut level breath. Let that come out. Don't hold it over your mouth. Just let it go in Jesus' name. Hate it. Hate it. All mental problems. Mental sickness, I command you. The Lord brought me out of that mental hospital. I was a vegetable. 17 shock treatments and didn't know a thing. And the devil's done a number on me, and that's why I hate him so. That's why I hate him. You may think I belong back in one, but I tell you, this is real. This is real. All you mental problems go in Jesus' name. You cannot hold this woman captive any longer. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm through, Glenn, right now. This is the end of Part A. Please play Part B. Thank you. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you. This is now the conclusion of this message from Part A. Of the Saturday afternoon service of November the 30th, 1991. The Thanksgiving weekend teaching and deliverance camp meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. I'm through, Glenn, right now. It's too bad we don't have hours and hours because I don't want anybody to leave here tomorrow that hasn't come, got what you come for. And it's hard for us to have all these private deliverances because we just can't get around to all of you. I'd love to sit down and talk to all of you and have you ask questions. And I, not that we know so much, but we've been through quite a bit in the last 50 some years that we've been saved. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Ready? I'd like to ask the Holy Spirit now to fill these vacuums, this emptiness. You see, if you're a 34 Christian, that means you're 70% not, not under the blood of Jesus and not really full of the Holy Ghost. If you're a 64 Christian, you still got 40% yet to go. Most of you are on, on the upward way. The next 40% is going to be pretty hard. But you can do it. You can do it. 64 Christians, it's all free from now, now on. You're going to have to take inch by inch. Praise the Lord. You're going to be different. Everybody's going to be different when they leave. Oh. He's going to turn me off. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, inherited uh, spirits of infirmity or familiar spirits of infirmity. And uh, some of you have heard me talk about this before, but there's a lot of people here who haven't. And... Uh, so that's what I'm going to deal with and tell you how the Lord brought us into the understanding of the inherited curses of our ancestral heritage in, the, in all lines, but especially in, this, in the area of infirmities. Uh, let's go over to Deuteronomy uh, chapter 30, and we will start 
<clears throat> with the 19th verse, the 30th chapter of Deuteronomy. <clears throat> While you're looking for that, I'll uh, fill in a little hole that Irma was talking about. When we were going to these meetings of this gentleman that they excommunicated because he used A&W, passed out A&W cups, he came to Los Angeles from the state of Washington to hold a seven-day meeting in uh, Wyatt's, uh, in the hotel that belonged to the Wyatt's downtown Los Angeles. And uh, somehow uh, I got, went down to record the, the meeting. So I went, I didn't miss one single meeting, but the meetings, instead of lasting seven days, lasted uh, seven weeks, seven weeks. And uh, I never missed a single meeting. Irma would get mad and say she was too tired and, and wouldn't come a time or two. But uh, finally, uh, when the meetings were down to about the last week or so, uh, I decided to fast for, for three days uh, for him to pray for me. Uh, I had uh, really nothing basically had happened. I'd been there and seen all this going on just like it's going on here. I've seen it for, seen it for now into the seventh week of it. And so I decided to fast and, and uh, for him to pray for me. And so I fasted three days and uh, came down this one night and said, Now, and I, I hadn't drank anything or eaten anything. I don't advise fasting without drinking. I found that out to my own detriment. Uh, I fasted 21 days and didn't drink anything or eat anything, and it, it hurt, hurt me uh, physically. Uh, well, if the Lord actually tells you to do that, that's one thing. But if you do it, uh, I don't advise it. Without You should drink liquids. So anyway, I brought me a, a, a pint of uh, uh, tomato juice or something along to drink after they threw praying for me because I hadn't drank anything. So they started to pray for me. And when they did, why, uh, something grabbed me by the, by the ankles. This has nothing to do with what I'm going to talk about. But something grabbed me by the ankles the floor, and then I could feel it in both my legs, and as they prayed for me, I could feel it moving up my, my legs, and if they quit praying, uh, it would just be right, right where they quit at, it'd stay there. And they'd start to pray, and it'd start to move again. They prayed for me for three hours, <clears throat> and for just, just one whatever it was, and eventually it got up uh, in, in my uh, area of my intestines. If they'd quit praying for me, I would just feel like I was just terrible, the worst cramps you ever had in your intestines. And then they'd start to pray, and they'd start to move again. It came up. It got up in my uh, chest area, and uh, they'd kind of stop a little bit to rest. And when they did, it felt like my heart was going to stop beating. It was just like something was just twisting me inside, like right, right here. And then they'd start praying, and it'd come on up. I, I wouldn't let them quit. They'd, they'd go to rest, and I, I would, it hurt me so bad, I'd tell them to Come on, pray, pray. And finally, it, it came on up, and when it got up here to my neck, it felt like somebody, uh, it was hurting me, but they, if they just slow up a little bit praying, it felt like somebody just had me around my neck this way, just, just choking me to death. And it came up and came up, and finally, it came up to, to here about the top of my ears and came out. But uh, that was, now, I've had lots of deliverances, but I never had anything like that. I've never seen anybody else have a deliverance like that. In all the times that we've been around where people have been delivered, I've never seen anybody else. But that's... Huh? Oh. Oh, you did, huh? Well, anyway, the Lord, the Lord delivered me and, 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 and set me free of, of that. And many other things since then. In fact, I, uh, the other day, about what was it, three weeks ago or two weeks ago, whenever it was, we got to talking about this Santa Claus thing. I got the hardest deliverance of all, and I never even thought about it. And we started all of a sudden, why, <clears throat> all of these here, they were here. Anyway, <clears throat> let's look at this subject here. Deuteronomy 30, 19. It says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. In other words, God says that we have the right to choose 
that we can choose life and blessing instead of cursing. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God, that thou mayest obey his voice, that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days. So <clears throat> we are to cleave unto the Lord. We are to learn to cleave unto the Lord, and, to, and we do so basically by hiding his word in our heart and obeying it. Uh, in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, see, we're, we're talking today. I've never taught just exactly like I'm going to do today uh, because there are a lot of other things that go with curses, but I'm not working on the sexual sins and all of that, which also uh, we're cursed by. But we're looking at the curses of infirmity. And in Deuteronomy chapter 28, uh, beginning with uh, uh, verse 14, it says, And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command you this day, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. How will they overtake us? How? If we do not observe to do and obey the word of the Lord, to keep his commandments and his statutes. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. Cursed shalt thou be thy basket and thy store. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land, the increase of the kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Now, we've heard a lot in the last few years about the blessings of Abraham. And I like the song that we sing, Abraham's blessings are mine. But Abraham's blessings are not yours unless you obey the word of the Lord. And if you obey the word of the Lord, you do not have to ask for prosperity. Prosperity will be at your door because you obey the word of the Lord. And God's word says that you will prosper if you obey his word. Therefore, we don't have to seek for Abraham's blessings. What we have to seek for is to understand and, and study the Word and obey the Word of the Lord in every little detail. Every little detail. It says, <clears throat> it says uh, to do all his or my commandments and my statutes, which I command thee this day. All of them. And then it goes on to say, Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. That's, this is if you don't obey the statutes and the commandments of the Lord. Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. And the Lord shall send upon thee <coughs> cursing, vexation, and rebuke in all that thou settest thy hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doing, whereby thou hast forsaken me. The Lord will make the pestilent cleave unto thee until he have consumed thee from the land whether thou goest to possess it. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption, with a fever, with an inflammation, with an extreme burning, with the sword and with blasting and with mildew. They shall pursue thee until thou perish. And the heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land, uh, of thy land powder and dust from heaven till it come down upon thee, until thou be destroyed. We have areas of this nation that we've known in days past as the Dust Bowl, and areas of this nation in the last five years or less that uh, have been, uh, well, two years ago when we went to Nebraska, there was areas in Nebraska where whole fields of, of uh, wheat. So there wasn't enough wheat out there to, to, for the wheat they had planted because of, the, of drought. <clears throat> And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. And the Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust from heaven till it shall come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. <clears throat> the Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and fleece seven ways before them, and shall be removed unto all the kingdoms of the earth. And thy carcass shall be meat unto all fowls of the air and to the beasts of the earth, and no man shall fray them away. The Lord shall smite thee with the botch of Egypt, and with the emrods, and with the scab, and with the itch, whereof thou canst not be healed. 
The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in the darkness. And thou shalt not prosper, have poverty in thy ways. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. Verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. And thou shalt, and they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever, because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Quite a proclamation, isn't it? Why do we have infirmities? Because we have not obeyed the word of the Lord our God, and have kept his commandments and his statutes. Now, how did we come to an understanding of the, the infirmities that we have inherited from our fathers? Leviticus Chapter 3. We were studying here some of the uh, traditions of our ancestors, and one of the traditions of our ancestors <coughs> is a statement made that I plead the blood. That is, a, that is a tradition. It is not scriptural, but all Pentecostal people have used it and do use it until they see the air of it and change. My mother still says it to this day, and I've talked to her about it, uh, because I was born and raised hearing her say, I plead the blood. But when you get into the deliverance ministry, you will find that unless <clears throat> you use the Scripture that it is written correctly, sometimes you will get called on it by the demon. And one thing that they can call you on is the statement, I plead the blood, because it is not scriptural. And... Uh, so we were studying on the as applications and aspects of the blood of Jesus. <clears throat> and uh, in so doing, in Leviticus chapter 3, verse 13, was one of the verses that I used in our study that night. And across the page on verse 6 of chapter 14 is another verse. Uh, but uh, And there are many verses that you will find concerning the blood of Jesus. And uh, this verse says, And he shall lay his hand upon the head of it and kill it before the tabernacle of a congregation, and the sons of Aaron shall sprinkle the blood thereof upon the altar around about. Now, uh, there are five, since this is part of our study, you need to understand that there are five applications that are scriptural of the blood of Jesus. And we were studying the five scriptural applications of the blood of Jesus. And for your information, one of them is that we can appropriate the blood. One of them is that we can cover with the blood. One is that we can uh, 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 sprinkle with the blood. Chapter, the verse we just read. We can sprinkle with the blood. We can apply. We can appropriate. We can cover. We can sprinkle. What is the fifth one? Wash. They overcome them by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, washed in the blood of the Lamb. So there are five scriptural applications to the blood of Calvary, the blood of the Lord Jesus. But I finished reading this chapter. It only has four more verses. I had no reason to finish reading. It had no part of our Bible study. But I finished, I finished reading it, and the last verse of this chapter says, It shall be a perpetual statute for your generations throughout all your generations that... Uh, uh, it shall be a perpetual statute for your generations throughout all your dwelling that you eat neither fat nor blood. Didn't mean one thing to me. I didn't know why I had read it. And we went on to our study. There was one of the ladies that was here that evening. The Lord woke her up in the night and had her get up and impressed upon her to get up and find all she could find concerning eating of blood. And there are quite a few verses. In fact, I think there's at least 26 verses that relate to the eating of blood. And, uh, and she got up in the night and hunted them up and looked them all up 
And she thought, well, why on earth am I doing this? And then the Lord reminded her that she had been to the doctor for the first time in several years that, that week, and he had told her that she was borderline diabetic. And, of course, they said, have you got any in your family? Fine. And my great-grandmother died from sugar diabetes. My grandmother died from sugar diabetes. My mother died from sugar diabetes. I have two sisters who have it very bad. One of them has lost part of her, one of her feet, or I think maybe both up, or something on both of her feet. And now they tell her she's borderline sugar diabetic. And the Lord told her, I don't know, but the Lord told her that the reason for sugar diabetes in their family line was, was an inherited curse from eating of blood. Now, that's very common in some of the nationalities, the German, the Scan some Scandinavians, the, uh, the Polish, the uh, Italian, blood sausage, blood pudding, blood soup. But God says that you shall not eat blood forever, perpetual, or fat. But we've been so, uh, you know, uh, yeah, rebellious that we don't have to pay any attention to the Word of God because we've uh, bypassed that and... And we live by grace now, so because we've got grace, we don't have to pay any attention to these to these things. And anyway, that's Old Testament. But if you'll study, if you'll study, you'll find there's, there's almost as much in what uh, is called the New Testament as what is called the Old Testament. But it's really not New and Old Testament. It's all one book. And if you do want to divide it and make it old and new, you've got to make the division at the second chapter of Acts. Because there is no New Testament until we come to the second chapter of Acts. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are Old Testament. The, uh, the division is not correct. And uh, so uh, that, doesn't, uh, that theory doesn't hold water. Uh, so uh, she came back Saturday night. We had prayer meetings, so I think, doing the same thing. Come back, this was Thursday night. Come back Sunday morning, and we had morning service. And I, before uh, I taught Sunday morning. I said, anybody got a prayer request this morning before we go any farther? And she held up her hand. And she said, I would like to say something. And I said, say on. And she got up and said what I have told you. And then she said, the Lord impressed upon me that if you would pray for me and break the curse off of me, my ancestral heritage, that the Lord would heal me. Now, that's the first time I ever heard anything about what we're teaching this afternoon. And it happened right here in this room. That was my beginning. So I had to search to find out. Well, I said, sure. If the Lord told you, we'll do it. There were nine people that morning that we prayed for. And then, now, now I have to find out what I've done. So then I have to search to find the Scriptures to back up what I have, what I have done this morning, you see. And in doing, doing so, then I have found what we're studying today. And a lot more. There's a lot more besides just the hair. But today we're studying the, basically the spirit of infirmity or the inherited spirit of the familiar spirit of infirmity that has a right to come down the family line. Okay, so let's uh, look at uh, 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 Exodus chapter 20, I think it is. I had my paper in there and pulled it out. Didn't mark it down, but I think that's where it's at. And uh, we will see now that there are many references to this. Yes, it's, it's Exodus chapter 20. Uh, it's in Deuteronomy 23. It's in Deuteronomy 7. It's in Exodus 34. It's in Deuteronomy 5. Uh, it says, uh, but it says, And God spake all these words, saying... Uh, now, there's another tradition, uh, that uh, is not uh, a biblical fact. They say this is Moses' law. No, it's God's law. For it says, And God spake all these words, saying to Moses. He told Moses. He, God spoke them. But Moses just said what God told him to. He said, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage, or out of the, the, uh, out of the land of sin. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Doing what? 
visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and the fourth generation of them that do not obey my word. King James says that hate me. Other translations say that do not obey my word. But showing mercy unto thousands and love that love me and keep my commandments. So I want to be one of those thousands that love the Lord by keeping his commandments and receiving his mercy. And there's another place where it says, showing mercy to a thousand generations. You realize where a thousand generations puts us? Way off in eternity. Forty, forty thousand years uh, from this time on out uh, into eternity that the Lord says that he's showing mercy and love unto those that obey his word. Okay, so then I, I found this, the basis for, this, uh, for the familiar spirits that have a right to come down the family line. Because we have disobeyed the word of the Lord, it has given a right to these areas of our life by, by disobeying the word of the Lord, and until we repent of it or it runs out, it stands. Now, you say, how can I repent of my father's sins? Well, you can't change. As a tree fell, so is it. But you can bring the sin of your father's ancestors up and ask the Lord to forgive the sin of the ancestors that has come down to visit you. And then you say, well, I thought I got rid of the curse at Calvary. Yes, we did, when we applied and appropriated. You see, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. It says, but it's nice to stop there. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Now, if we just stop right there, the world is all saved. Everything's taken care of. But we've got to finish the verse, that whosoever. The same is true of the curses. Galatians 3.13 says that Jesus became a curse, so I don't have to bear the curse. I must apply and appropriate it as written, and appropriate Galatians 3.13, that Jesus became my curse. It is not an automatic thing. However, my, my Pentecostal tradition taught me that it was. But I have found out that that is not so that I must apply and appropriate the word of the Lord in my behalf and your behalf in order to, to come out from underneath these areas that I am bound by because of the sins of my ancestors and even my own sins. And then the demons, Satan's demon's job is to get us to repeat the sin before it runs out so it's become perpetual. Now, we're, we're not studying the ancestral curses of sexual sins today, but I am of the opinion that every family... Every living person, until the curses are broken, are under the curse of incest and the bastard. I believe every single living person is under that curse until you, it's broken off of your family line. Why? Because it is a ten-generation curse, and in ten generations that has been repeated someplace in the ancestral line, either, either the illegitimate child or the incest. In one form or another, has been repeated. And, and, and so... I think we're under a perpetual curse of incest and the, the bastard until we've come down to the place where we take dominion and authority over that curse and break it off of our family lines. Now, we're dealing this afternoon, basically, though, uh, today with the familiar spirits of infirmity. And look around us. We're all, in some way or other, under some type of an infirmity, like... Uh, 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 a brother uh, Hayford, when he had everybody that was sick to walk by the front of the platform. He didn't pray for them. He didn't touch them. did nothing. When he got through, he said, I just wanted to see how many sick people was in this place. And he said, this ought not be. And that's true. It ought not be. But we are. So help us to come to an understanding and be able to apply and appropriate the word of the Lord for our for our individual uh, problems and concerns and for our families so that we can come out from underneath this demonic power of Satan that he has been hold, as holding and is holding over us individually and as a family, that we can live and have life and not death. But of course, the answer to that, again, is quit sinning and have life. And <clears throat> so, but little by little, we're learning, and little by little, he's changing us. Amen. Of course, because little by little, he's changing me. And that's true. Little by little, as we come to an understanding and then apply and appropriate the word, we're coming to an understanding of the word of the Lord so that we can have uh, the life that God intended for us to have. 
Okay, let's go back to Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 58. It says, If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law, and I've already read most of it, that which concerned the spirits of infirmity, if thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name of the Lord thy God, and I say that his name is Jesus, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful and many and great. And the, yeah, or, may, or many and great also. And, and, the, plagues, and, and the, the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long countenance and sore sickness and long continuance. He repeats it twice there. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which you were afraid of, and they shall cleave unto you. Now, here is the horrible, awful statement. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon you until you be destroyed. And today we've got some plagues in the earth that God has brought that, <clears throat> that there is no cure for because of the sin that's in the land that God has allowed them to come. Now, cancer, they have no cure for cancer, they, and they have no cure for AIDS. And I definitely state that AIDS is a curse from God because of sin that's in the, in, in the land. And uh, if God ever allows them to find a cure for it, it will be, uh, it will be by His grace, because I'm, uh, it is uh, Sodom and Gomorrah is the curse of the land, and, and he's in the, and, and uh, uh, that curse is on, is on the land. Uh, so, we're going to come against these spirits of infirmity this afternoon. We're going to take dominion over them. We're going to take authority over them. And to the best of our ability, we're going to, to break them from off of our family lines. Uh, and uh, if, I, if there be some when I get through here that the Lord has showed somebody, why, speak it out and we will add it to the list this afternoon. Okay? All right. I'll pray, and you all agree with me, and I'll, I'll pray. Irma has already prayed here, the, here for us this afternoon in the other area and asked the Lord to cleanse us. We prayed today for the Lord to, to uh, 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 cleanse our minds and, and forgive us for our unforgiveness in these areas of our, our life. Linda did, and, and, uh, and for, for unforgiveness, because without, if we have any... Uh, uh, unforgiveness against anybody, well, the Lord won't hear our prayers, so uh, we need to have that taken care of. And Linda did a job, and Irma already taken care of that. So we'll continue on uh, from uh, uh, from uh, where we're at now. So we're going to work on the spirits of infirmities. Father, I come as, as a priest in behalf of myself and in behalf of these people today, and I ask for your grace and your mercy to, that's extended unto us, and I praise you for it. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that cleanses and washes us from sin. I apply and I appropriate the blood of Jesus to, to, to our lives today to wash and cleanse us so that we may be a people holy and righteous before you, walking before you to, to be a glory unto your name. And Father, I thank you for the privilege you've given us today to use the name of Jesus. For it is written, Satan, that Jesus said, In his name we have authority and dominion to set the captives free and to bind up the brokenhearted and to loose the, cap and to loose the captive. And I break the, the powers of Satan over us this afternoon, and I put the blood of Jesus to cleanse and wash. I bind the powers of the familiar spirits, and I bind the familiar spirits, the spirits of disease and infirmities this afternoon. I break their assignments, and I apply and appropriate the blood of Jesus to cleanse and to wash and to separate us between us and the sins of our ancestors that would give these familiar spirits rights to our physical bodies. I thank you for the privilege you've given us, Father, because it is written in Galatians 3.13, that Jesus became the curse so that we do not have and I do not have to bear the curse. So, Saint and I apply and I appropriate the fact that Jesus became our curse this afternoon to break the curses and, and, and take the rights away of these familiar spirits of these curses that are visited down upon us because of the sins of our ancestors. Now, Father, I thank you for the blood of Jesus and I apply and appropriate the blood of Jesus to cleanse and wash us and to separate between us and the sins of our ancestors and that which has given a right for them to come down the family line. 
I break the, their, their power and their dominion. I, set, I, I loose us from their authority, and I loose us from, the, from their rights to come down any farther, and I cut them off at this point from us and from our posterity. I loose us from them in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, I come in Jesus' name, and I bind these familiar spirits again, bind them in chains, ask for the angels of the Lord to come and, and to uh, keep them bound until they shall be judged at the day of judgment. For, Father, it is written that Jesus sat down at your right hand, and he's going to sit there until his enemies are put under his feet. And, Father, these are some of his enemies, and we're going to put them under feet this afternoon, and they're also our enemies. So, Father, I come in the name of Jesus. I take authority and dominion in Jesus' name over the spirit of consumption. I bind this for the for spirit of consumption and the familiar spirit of consumption, and I break its authority in Jesus' name. I come against the spirit of fever. I bind the spirit of fever and all that uh, its, its attributes. I bind the spirit of inflammation and all of its attributes. I bind the spirit of burning in Jesus' name. I bind the spirit of botch. I bind the spirit of emeralds. I bind the spirit of scab. I bind the spirit of itch. I bind the spirit of madness. I bind the spirit of blindness. I bind the spirit of astonishment of heart. I bind the spirit of, of blindness. I bind the spirit of cancer. I bind the spirit of leukemia. I bind the spirits of kidney stones and kidney problems and, and, and bladder problems. I bind the spirit of liver problems and, and, and uh, uh, gallbladder problems. I bind the spirits of sugar diabetes. I bind the spirits of hypoglycemia. I bind the spirits of sinus and arthritis. And, and I, I bind the spirits associated with heart problems, uh, of, of plaque, and, and uh, the, the problems of, uh, that's associated with the heart problem and, and the blood vessels. I bind their power, these, the powers of these familiar spirits and these spirits of disease, and I bind you and I break your assignment over God's people, and I command you to come out of us in Jesus' name. I command you to come out of God's people this afternoon, you spirits of infirmity, you familiar spirits of infirmity. I bind and break your assignment over God's people. I come against a, a, a problem with the ears of hearing. I come against uh, eye problems, uh, 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 and sight. I come against uh, these problems in Jesus' name, and I command you to, to loose us and come out of us. I break your assignment over God's people this afternoon in Jesus' name. Spirits uh, of madness, uh, mental problems. I bind and break your assignment over God's people. I bind your assignments. I loose us from mental problems. Spirit of madness, I break the assignment over us in Jesus' name, and I loose us from it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Spirits of fever and inflammation and burning, all the different uh, diseases of skin diseases, I break your assignment of scab. I break your assignment and itch. I break your assignments over us this afternoon. I loose us from it in the name of Jesus. Come out of us. Come out. Come out. I command you to come out of God's people. Come out. Spirits of infirmity, I break your assignments. I take your rights away. I loose us from, your, uh, fr from the right that you have over us. I break the curse from off of us, and I set us free from it in Jesus' name. Come out of God's people. Come out of us. Set us free. Loose us in Jesus' name. Take a deep breath. Let them go. Loose them. Take a deep breath. Take a gut-level breath. Push them out. Push them out. Break, the, uh, break the, 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 the rights they have. Spirits of infirmity. Come out of us. Loose us in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out in the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name, come out. Come out. I bind and break your assignment over God's people in Jesus' name. We will walk in, 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 in health and, and life. We will have life and health. It is written, Satan, that by the scars and stripes of the whipping post, the, there's restoration and healing for the physical body. And I apply and I appropriate the scars and stripes of the whipping post that Jesus became our curse and that Jesus became uh, our sickness and our disease through the scars and stripes of the whipping post that there's healing for the physical body. And I command the, the, these spirits to, to, to loose us and set us free this afternoon in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out. Spirits of infirmity, come out of us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. <coughs> Thank you, Father. Father, <coughs> by the scars and stripes of the whipping post, I command our physical bodies to begin to restore their self in areas where they have been destroyed because of, of sickness and disease, I command these, our bodies to begin to restore their self and, and restoration to come. I command restoration to come into our physical bodies in the name of the Lord Jesus. I speak to, to our bodies in whatever area that they need re restoration. I command our bodies to begin to restore their self. Father, you made us. Wonderfully, you, you made us. And you made us so that we would restore and, and be whole. 
And I command our bodies to begin to restore themselves and to become whole in Jesus' name. Whatever area, I come against uh, uh, stomach ulcers. I come against uh, 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 tr- uh, uh, trouble in the uh, 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 colitis. Uh, I come against uh, uh, problems in the uh, uh, bowels. Uh, I come against problems in the, uh, uh, in the intestines. Uh, I come against problems in the lungs, uh, breathing problems. I break the assignments of it over us in Jesus' name. I loose us from it in the name of the Lord. I come against problems uh, in the feet and the legs. I break the assignments of it in Jesus' name. I loose us from it in Jesus' name. I break that assignment over our physical bodies, and I break the uh, the Satan's rights. I take Satan's rights away, and I loose us from it in the name of Jesus. I praise you for it, Lord. Arthritis, spirit of arthritis, I come against you in Jesus' name. I break your assignment over God's people. I loose us from it. I loose the bones, the back, the, the, the joints, the, the, uh, the, uh, in, in the backbone. I come against it in Jesus' name, in the shoulders. I loose us from arthritis. I break that, uh, that condition in Jesus' name. Teeth, problems with the, with the teeth and the gums. I come against the pyrrhea and, and problems in the teeth and gums. I break that assignment over, over us in Jesus' name. I break the curse of it over us in the name of Jesus, and I loose us from it in Jesus' name. I praise you for it, Lord. I thank you for it. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I come against the, the curse that comes down the family line that causes uh, 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 the children uh, to, to be uh, uh, born malfunctioned. I come against that in any of the families. I break that curse in Jesus' name over the family lines of children that they would be born with, with a malfunction in their physical bodies. I break that curse of it in Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Father. I praise you for it. I praise you for it. Uh, uh, uh. Epilepsy. Epilepsy. You foul spirit of epilepsy, I take authority over you today. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you foul spirit of epilepsy, I bind you and I break your assignment. I break the curse that, come, that has given a right in the family line. And I break that curse uh, and, and any words that's been spoken against any of us here by any witchcraft or any, wit, any doctor or any potions that's been worked against us or against our ancestors that has given a right in the family line. I break that curse and I come against it and I cause the words to come to naught and I break the curse of it over us in the name of Jesus and I loose us from it in Jesus' name. And I break the dominion of it in Jesus' name over, over, our, uh, over the, these people today. In the, in the name of Jesus, I praise you for it, Father. I thank you for it. I thank you for it. Yes? Didn't hear you. Nerve deafness. Father, I come against nerve deafness. I break that curse. Nerves, I command you to restore yourself. Nerve deafness, I bind the spirit of it. I bind the spirit of deafness. You foul spirits of deafness and nerve deafness, come out of us in Jesus' name. I rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. I break your assignment over our hearing. In the name of Jesus, I set us free from it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Praise you for it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? Oh, uh, I, I come against all those things that the Lord says that will come against us that's not mentioned, that he hasn't mentioned. I come against all those that are not mentioned, and I break the curses of it off of us. Father, forgive us for not obeying your word. Forgive, forgive us, Father. Forgive us, Father, for not obeying your word that has allowed these things a right to come unto us. Forgive us, Father, so that we can walk in life and health and strength, that we may be cleansed, Lord, of these areas of our life. Forgive us, Lord, and help us, Lord, to study your word, that we will study your word and hide it in our heart so that we'll know uh, uh, that the areas of our life, Lord, that we haven't been obeying your word. Help us, Lord, to study it and to, uh, and to hide it in our heart, Father, that we will walk b- before you in holiness and righteousness, that there will be no place for Satan to find, no place when he comes that he can find in us, uh, that to where he can torment us in any way, physically or mentally or spiritually. I thank you for it, Father. I praise you for it in Jesus' name. Spirit of poverty, spirit of poverty, the curse of poverty in, in, in Malachi. God says that he curses us if we don't pay our tithes and give offerings. He says we're cursed. And, Father, I come against the curse of not paying our tithes that comes upon us for not giving you that portion which belongs unto you. I come against the curse of poverty, having holes in your pocket, because you haven't given God his portion. I break the curse of poverty in Jesus' name over God's people. Father, forgive us for not giving you that portion which belonged unto you. 
I break the assignment of it over. It's in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. What, what else have we missed? <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Well, Father, I thank you, Father, for hearing our petitions today. I thank you, Lord, for helping us to desire and to have a desire to study your word, to follow it, Lord, that we may understand your word and live by it so that we may have health in all of our flesh. I thank you for it, Father, and I praise you for it. And, Father, I thank you again for, <coughs> the, uh, for life and strength to flow into our physical bodies. I thank you, Lord, for the scars and stripes of the whipping folks. And I command us again, once again, I command our physical bodies to receive the healing virtue of the Lord Jesus and to be kept, begin to restore themselves in the areas where, they, where, where we have been destroyed because of, of sickness and disease. I thank you for it, Father. I thank you for restoration, that we may be a vessel of honor unto thy praise. And I praise you for it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Amen, amen. Praise you, Jesus. Well, let's raise our hands and ask the Holy Spirit to, to come in and to help drive these things out and then to fill these areas that restoration will come to our physical body. Father, I thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for it, Father. To indwell us, Lord, that we be filled with the Holy Ghost in every area of our being. And that, Father, that uh, your word it is written and the Holy Ghost will drive out these areas of our bodies, Lord, that we will be a vessel of holiness unto thee. That you shall be, that we shall be a, a vessel unto thy glory, and I thank you for it, a testimony uh, 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 unto those about us uh, of the power of God in our lives, as we declare and make Jesus Lord of our lives, and make Him King of Kings and Lord of Lords, for He is our King, and He and He is our Redeemer, and He is our life and our strength, and in Him we give praise and glory and worship, and I praise you, Father, and I thank you for it, in Jesus' name, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Well, we've got a few minutes of time here before uh, supper's ready. It may be ready. I don't know. But I think that we need to. Uh, I know we're wearing poor Linda's voice out. <coughs> but uh, lunch is ready. Whatever. Well, anyway, but we still, I, I want to I, I sing the, uh, uh, the, the blood of Jesus. You got something to say? Okay. I want... I ask and nobody needs it. You know, the blood of Jesus is our protection and our covering and our care. And uh, we, we need to appropriate and apply the blood of Jesus to us as we travel or whatever. We need to ask for the protection and the angels of the Lord to go with us and to be our protection and our covering and our care. I tell you, there's many and many a time that so many things could have happened to all of us except for... The, uh, the angel of the Lord that was with us to watch over us. I can tell you many, many instances where the angel of the Lord has watched over me and kept me from, the, uh, from death or, or being hurt badly. And I know that the Lord done it. The Lord has protected us. So we need to appreciate the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus and to uh, uh, appropriate it uh, continually. The blood prevails. Let's sing it together. Hallelujah. The blood prevails, the blood of the risen Lord has power to save, just like in olden days, the blood prevails, no matter what others say, thank God the blood prevails, there is power. Oh, oh, oh. 
Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for all the kitchen help and all that they're doing back there to feed us. Bless them, Lord. We thank you for it. Lord, we thank you for making it health and flesh to us this evening as we rejoice together in fellowship, Lord, eating the good food that they got ready for us. Amen. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home.